This is a very, very touchy topic. When I see an F80 or an F82, I look at it and I think that thing is probably not going to sound very good and usually, usually I'm right. I just cannot get over the sound. I think the first thing I have to talk about is the sound. They don't have a soul, you know, they're just computer, super fast cars. Ballistically fast. If it's not usable power. It's just too much power. I feel like that car is just too much power. I know, it's going to break a lot of people's hearts, but it's the better car. Such a great experience. The F80 is the steering. The steering, man, oh my gosh. I just would never own one. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, as you can see, I'm literally editing this video right now. I forgot to do an intro, but this video was a collection of submissions that I had from a bunch of my friends online who have F80 M3s or have E90Xs and talking about their overall experience, the good and the bad. This video may come off as like kind of intense, but it's more so of me being very honest and also everyone who submitted videos giving their honest opinion. This is just for fun. You know, it's not trying to bring anything down. It's just pointing out more towards the E90X community because that's what I'm involved with. That's what I prefer. You guys can just take it how you want to. All the videos are really well explained and I think that we can all relate to it. And I would love to hear your opinion in the comments. Whether you're team F80 or team E90, doesn't matter to me because I respect all builds and I respect all opinions and we're all here to share that with each other and have fun. This is all with good fun and good reasoning. And I think that this will hopefully give potentially new buyers an idea of which way to go. Um, and if you can do both, why not? So enjoy the video. What's going on, Spencer? Sean here, AKA Mashimaro. This is a very, very touchy topic, I feel like for a lot of people, but I'd like to give you my two cents on what I think. I'm gonna preface by saying the F80 is a phenomenal car. Obviously I'm in it right now. I have an F80 M3. As a matter of fact, I've had an E92. I've had an E90, another E92. I've had an E90. I've had an F80, another F80 and a G82 when it comes to BMWs. Uh, they're all great cars, don't get me wrong. But on paper, the F80 will look far superior than the E90, okay? And that's just because, uh, yes, it has more power, it it has a lot more technology, it has, everything's upgraded to be better, um, and that includes even like fuel economy and everything. So the F80 looks better on paper, but I feel like when it comes to driving the car, once you own both of them, if you're an enthusiast, there's a reason why there's a lot of people, including me, are looking for another E92 after they've had both cars. And I think for me, it comes down to a few things. It's number one, the motor. I think the S65 is a fantastic, also reliable motor if well taken care of. You do your rod bearings, throttle actuators, water pump, all that kind of good stuff. And, and it and it will perform and these these motors we're seeing them go far beyond 200,000 miles yeah, it's very responsive it sounds phenomenal I think the motor is great I think the the look is one definitive and distinct thing about this car because it's safe to say everyone thinks you know like the f80 looks fantastic the e90 looks fantastic and 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 I think so too but I think the way that the e92 looks has a very different feel to it i i personally like it better just because i feel like it has a a certain look that maybe i i i'm more fond of um i feel like when you lower it on coilovers and have a nice track midi setup very subtle things here and there it just hits the spot and i think that's kind of just what i think and don't get me wrong like i said the f80 looks fantastic it's a beautiful car one thing i don't like about the f80 is the steering uh, I know a lot of people are going to say this, but the, the electronic steering and, and the way that it feels, it's, it's so artificial, um, along with a lot of things, obviously, but I feel like the mechanical perspective on the E90 has a very driver oriented feel that I prefer, and I'm sure a lot of other enthusiasts prefer. I, I think that's what it is that really gets me is just the way that it drives and the way that it feels. I, I, like the rawness in the E90 and E92. Overall, I, I, I just think the E92 just has that sweet spot. And it's one of those things, once you've owned both of them, it, it kind of tickles you in a certain way that you know you just, you just know this is the car that you would prefer. And a lot of people love the F80s, they're fast, they, they do everything great, they're comfortable. Like I said, on paper, they're, they're way better, but for, for the enthusiast, if you're driving it and you love driving the car, you'll know why the E92 uh, is, is something that people want to go back to. Like myself, looking for another E92 after having 
a couple F80s and still having a G82 right now. So that's my thought. And I think a lot of people would agree. I'm Christina and this is my F80 M3. This is the first M3 that I have ever owned and I've had it for about a month and a half, almost two months now. And I have zero complaints. I absolutely love this car. I love everything from how it sounds to how it looks to how it feels. I picked this car and M3 specifically because of the community around M3. If you have this car, it's because you're completely obsessed with it and you love how it feels when you drive it. I can't wait to see how many more things I can learn how to do and how far I can push this car. The people that I've already been fortunate enough to meet because of this car has been such a great experience. This car has just opened up a whole new world for me. I'm so happy with my choice to get the F80. Yeah, my name is Mike Mai, owner and uh, founder of Precision Dynamics. Um, we're going to film the topic of F8X versus E9X. If you guys are following me, you guys know I own an E90 M3 and I've actually had a black one before. There's a reason why I have that car and why I've gone back to the E9Xs. So this is going to be my fourth E9X car that I've owned. There's something about this chassis that just handles a Amazing, you know, and I love these cars and I worked on F8X ever since they came out in 2014 when my buddy bought one so technically 2015 model right but it was in 2014 was when the F80 first came out from that point on I worked on them I drove them I love them they're fast but once we started modifying it more with suspension wheels you know bolt-ons stuff like that to me the chassis it's not that it doesn't handle well it does but I feel that it's too much power for that chassis so to me I feel like with the power that it produces, the torque that it produces, it overwhelms the vehicle. The chassis can't keep with it. To me, like when you track that car, I always recommend for everybody who tracks their F8X to not go for power mods because it's just too much power. When you're making too much power and the car just gets snappy, fishtails, goes sideways, it's just not fun. And then the DCT and the F8X is just absolutely horrible. I mean, if any of you guys have ever driven one or maybe you guys own one, you guys can probably agree with me that the DCT on the F8X and the M2 Comp, first gear is essentially useless. It just drives horrible. The most annoying thing about the F8Xs or just the S55 in general is the sound. I cannot get over the sound. You know, it just sounds really, really raspy. If you can get over those few things and you enjoy the car, then that's power to you. But for me, personally, I prefer the E9X. It's just, even though it's underpowered, it's very, very slow. It's all about the way that the car drives, the way that the car handles, the way that the car responds to your steering. And everything about the E9X is amazing. Hence why I have a E90 M3. But the S55, is it's a, amazing motor you know like you can make a lot of power all that good stuff but to me personally you know not to bad mouth on the car i know a lot of my clients owns them including my business partner kennedy you know a lot of people love that chassis and love that style the car looks great don't get me wrong i love how they look i just cannot get over the sound if you can get over all that and you enjoy it power to you but besides that i mean the car's great you know i love f8x's but there's something about the E9Xs that just pulls me back and draws me back to it. You know, like the, the interior is old, but it's amazing. You update it to Apple CarPlay, you're done. That's all you need. You don't need all the fancy stuff that F8X has. All the safety features, you know, lane departure and, um, you know, front and rear parking sensors, reverse camera, 360 camera, all that stuff. My X5 has all that. And even then, I don't really use it. It's nice to have. But I don't have that car to daily drive it and worry about all these little things. To me, the E9X is more about like a driver experience. I don't, I mean, I do drive the car a lot, but it's not a car I plan on just dailying every single day. You can, there's no problem with that. And even then, the car drives amazing. You know, the sound, you cannot beat the S65 sound. Like there's no other BMW engine that sounds better than that except S85, which sounds amazing, but they're way too problematic. But the M5, M6 sounds absolutely insane. I had a M6, downpipes, exhaust, insane sound, but to me it just felt like a boat. That's why I got rid of it. You know, it's a great car, 
but it just feels like a boat. Kind of like the F8Xs to me, it's not that much heavier. It feels really, really heavy compared to the E9X. You can drive the E9X and I mean, I'm in Spencer's right now and like, it's very simple, very basic, you know? You go into like F8X, there's a bunch of little things all over the place. You know, the center trim has a bunch of stuff. There's just so much going on. This on the other hand is just perfect. And that's why I own the E90M3 and that's why I always will own the E90M3. I never plan to sell the car. And I've told everybody that knows me, including Kennedy, my business partner, that I would never own an F8X or anything with S55 ever. I, I work on them, I drive them, I've have, had enough seat time in them. I just don't enjoy them, you know? I just enjoy the E9Xs so much more. Now, for those of you guys that might be saying, well, what about the G80, G82? Driven it, driven it hard. You know, we got to drive it pretty wildly. One of my buddies actually bought one and we were breaking in the motor and just driving it around, just thrashing on the car. Great car, um, interior's amazing. Exteriors, eh. But it still doesn't drive that well. It just feels like a boat as well. And it's, again, if you think the F8X is overpowering, the G8X is even worse. It makes way more power and it just goes sideways. I mean, I'm sure you guys have been watching videos and seeing people crashing their F8Xs and G8Xs because that's why. It's just too much power for the chassis. The car just goes sideways. E9Xs is controllable. It's elegant. It's everything that you want, it's there. If you want to just get on it, you can you know, predict it. F8X, you can't. It's a great car, don't get me wrong, again. I'm not bashing on it. I just would never own one. Hey everybody, sorry about the mess. I'm moving. Um, just a few quick words about two great cars. Um, start with the E92. Mine is somewhat modified. It's got a lot of suspension and brake goodies on it. And the GTS is also nearly identically built, but they're two radically different cars. The strong point of the E92 is obviously the engine. The S65 is probably one of the all-time greats. But that being said, the S55 in the GTS in particular is an animal. It's ballistically fast, pulls like it's NA, but has that turbo torque. Um, I've also had a stage three Dynan uh, F80 that was probably quicker in a straight line, but just lacked all the emotion. At the end of the day, it comes down to what you want. For me personally, it'd probably be the GTS. I know it's gonna break a lot of people's hearts, but it's the better car all around, faster, more, technically capable i think it looks better it sounds good it's been absolutely bulletproof uh 16 000 daily driven miles and i don't know like 10 track days and i've never had a single issue with it it's never never had a hiccup my car comes in at 34 18 pounds with half a tank of gas and it just is an animal it's so fast uh, my e92 i've only had on track once it was having some big issues, so I don't really have a good analysis of it. But on the street, I think the way this car is set up, it's a better car. Uh, it's got a better damper in it. Uh, it's an MCS triple rather than an Olin's TTX. Slightly softer spring rate, so as a street car, it's better. As a street car, it's also more fun because it's just slower, so you really get to get on it. Um, GTS, half a second in throttle, you're already going too fast. Whereas the E92, you really get to be on it for a little bit. Hope that helps. Hey everybody, my name's Logan. I just want everybody to know, I'm not a professional race car driver, not an expert in cars at all. I've had three 92s now, one F80. I have both right now. Usually that would be parked over here, but the F80 is in the shop. Take everything with a grain of salt. So I really like the F80. It's super fast. I think the F80 and F82 are, that generation is probably the best looking BMW ever made. It's got tons of torque, which isn't always a good thing. It's a practical car. There's a lot of space in the back. I think it actually might have more space than my Macan had, which is a big SUV, but still it's it's practical. I mean, mine's been reliable so far. Only reason it's at the shop is getting the roof replaced because I'm an idiot and I messed that up. <laughs> uh, aside from that, um, there's a lot of aftermarket support just as there is with the E92s. It's fun, but it's not as fun, I think, as the E92. There's something that's definitely missing from the F80 that you get out of the E92. It's a combination of a few things. For one, it's the exhaust. The F80 exhaust has always been kind of like not the best. Now again, different opinions, right? I, For me personally, it's not my favorite. The equal length has definitely helped with, you know, a lot of 
that sound but the problem i have with that then is like when i see an f80 or an f82 i look at it and i think that thing is probably not going to sound very good and usually usually i'm right when i hear an equal length it's so different from what i know it's supposed to sound like it seems off like it's not supposed to be that way maybe it's just me being weird but that's always kind of bugged me and i still have you know the intent of, of buying the equal length eventually for my for my mpe that i have in the f80 it's just the noise just isn't what I feel like the car looks like it should sound like, if that makes sense. Got tons of power, even even stock, without a tune. Mine is stage 2 catless, so it's it's pretty quick. Still has difficulty putting the power down because the RE71Rs that I have, you know, they have to get hot before they get really sticky. And it's a commuter car, so what am I doing on the street that's going to allow it to get that hot to actually put the power down to begin with? Another little issue I had with, with that car, or, or I do have, but again, you know, it's a front engine rear-wheel drive car, so it's limited by, by being a rear-wheel drive car. Most modern cars are just so fast now. Everything that comes out is somehow faster than the last, you know, iteration of that car, which is kind of, you know, baffling, but it's good, you know, progress is good. But at a certain point, the novelty of just pure power and straight line speed, I think, kind of wears off and you want something more than just that you know i don't fault anyone for wanting an f80 for the power just to see what it's like and you know tuning it and all that stuff but still you know even though it's faster faster doesn't always equate to better i mean in my in my opinion and with this car it it communicates very well what it's doing it's not the fastest but it doesn't really have to be because it, it kind of makes up for it in other places uh, and even though it again it's low on torque, it's low on power when compared to most you know modern cars or whatever, it's it's a very easy to drive, forgiving car. The way it sounds, uh, the steering, all of it is for me. I, I'm biased because I've had three of these. It's a great car. I, I enjoy it. If I had to have one, uh, F80 versus E90, E92. I mean, obviously I'm gonna take the E92. Not this E92 because it's not the most. <laughs> practical for for street driving day-to-day -day stuff but you know stock for stock i just prefer the the s65 you know motor efficiency as as far as power is concerned you can make so much more power out of the f80 that you know for the same amount of money that you can in this i mean to get dollar for dollar you know horsepower the f80 it's no contest I mean, you can get insane amounts of power but again on that that same subject it's like if if your car has six seven eight hundred wheel horsepower and you can't put the power down if it's not usable power i i guess i just don't really understand the point of that right personally i, I take handling and sound and you know more fun over just sheer power <laughs> any day i think the the value of these will, will keep going up steadily because this this chassis is really the last of its kind you know everything's going turbo now and hybrid electric whatever which that's cool, you know, whatever. But this and the uh, E60 M5, it's like they're kind of the last of its kind, you know, like a, a naturally aspirated for this, the, the V8 that revs to almost, you know, 9,000 RPM on a, on a street BMW, not a Honda, is it's pretty cool, you know. And I think people are going to see the value in that. And I mean, all it takes is just getting out and, and driving it to see how just how different it is from the F80 and, and F82. And again, it's not a bad thing. It's just, you know, my personal preference is I, I prefer this experience over the F80 experience. There's a lot more than what I've brought up. It's a lot of fun. I, I enjoy both. I just enjoy the E92 more. What's going on, Spence? It's uh, Eddie down in Miami. Uh, doing this video you asked me to do on my uh, E90 M3 over here. For me, this is the last real M3. You got the feel, the sound, the look. You know, the car just talks to you the new m3s they don't have a soul you know they're just computer super fast cars i mean the new one looks terrible but uh but anyways uh basically this car is 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 an ultimate daily driver for me uh, i recently have a newborn so he fits in the back seat so it's basically a family hauler grocery getter it's really fast it's supercharged so it makes 540 wheel horsepower uh interlagos blue with i mean one of the prettiest colors that you can get they don't sound like this or look like this anymore. This is like the last of the real BMWs, in my opinion. Sound is one of the biggest things about this car. And it's, in my opinion, the best sounding M3 ever made. So, Meister shaft in the rear, supercharged. That's the result. But, uh, but yeah, man. 
just wanted to make a quick video so you can see you know the reasons why i like daily driving this car and uh hope to see you soon man what i like about that car it feels very luxurious. I bought a 2018, it was loaded with, I think, every option besides competition. And it feels brand new, like it's a 2018. It has a lot of new technology and it felt amazing to drive. The car is really fast in a straight line. Like, it's a fast car. I don't really like straight line speed, I don't need it. Like, I'd rather be fast in the corners and I, everyone has a different opinion, no problem. I feel like that car is just too much power and I don't want it to sound weird, but like, that's a lot of power for a car that you don't really need and you can really never put it down unless you're doing street racing, which I don't do. I don't do any straight line stuff. So, it's a good thing and a bad thing. It's very fast, like right out the box, no tune, no anything. If you do a downpipe and tune, you get a lot of power very quickly. Huge trunk, huge back seats, I could fit everything in that car that I needed to, which was really nice to have. A lot of cargo space. Felt very reliable, no issues with it. I did the crank hub issue right away, and I tracked it three times with no problem. Not one problem at all. And it felt great. It was a nice car. I did Sparco seats in it. It felt reliable. I didn't feel like anything was gonna break. The driving position was great, so when I got in the car, I was very happy to feel that the seating position was, was legit. The car held value very well, and I think it's just because the market's hot right now. I was able to almost break even on the car. I could have gotten a little bit more money, but I just said, you know what? I just want to get rid of the car and be able to have that money freed up to buy a different car. I think it has a lot of potential. Um, if you want to do mods to it, it's very professional businessman-esque if you want it to be that way. I think with all those good things being said, let's jump into the bad things. So I have a feeling that this may end up making a lot of people mad, but I'm going to be honest with everyone and just say what I feel. I think the first thing we have to talk about is the sound. I don't know if it's equal length, mid-pipe, or something like that. I heard one with the competition exhaust. It sounded okay. Every other system, I think, sounds terrible. Literally, every F8X I've heard sounds bad. I've never heard one that I'm like, wow, that sounds really cool. Every V8, even when they're obnoxious, loud even when they have a restricted OEM setup they still sound really good there's induction noise there is the exhaust noise in general of the motor the s65 v8 that is such a good motor they just sound bad I just don't like the fact that you spend all this money on a sports car and it sounds bad you just don't you get less experience out of a driving connection it's a big car like it feels huge um, I'm in this e90 and when I the first thing when I got in this car when I bought it going from the f80 I'm like wow this car is small and it is it's smaller and I prefer that because you feel more nimble on the track you feel more nimble on the street you're you're closer to each door I, I can touch this door in my f80 I don't think I can touch the door like I, I like this car to be small it's just a big f80 is a huge car very fast I know that's weird on the, the bad list, but it's just too much power. Um, I went to Button Willow the whole time. I, I wasn't really enjoying myself as much as I wanted to because the sound, there was one point where I was behind a NASCAR and I couldn't hear my car. And I understand NASCARs are loud, but I couldn't feel my car. I couldn't, I couldn't hear it. When I have an exhaust on this car, you can feel it. It allows you to be more connected with the car. And I'll keep going back to the sound. The crank hub issue, everyone says it's a myth. I don't know. I money out of your pocket to fix something that BMW should have had fixed right away. The steering, man. Oh my gosh. The steering in the F80 M3 is the least connected part of the car. I posted a video of me driving, um, I think it was at the S's or at bus stop or something on Button Willow. Just a quick couple turns. In I was watching my my footage and I was like data logging trying to see what I was doing and my steering it was just so loose like left and right every two seconds and it was just way too loose and I had um, a couple different driving modes you can do where it's very light and then also it's heavier even when it was heavier it was just so not connected like you'd throw it a little bit to the left and right and it would just be way too responsive and it didn't feel like it matched the car size and matched the car's grip if that makes any sense i feel like the f8x platform is like playing golf with your family the e90 is like going to warp tour in 2010 and standing in the middle of the mosh pit as a breakdown is about to happen. What I'm what I'm trying to say is that it's like the demographic is so different. E9X is definitely a younger crowd, I'd say, because it's more attainable quickly, I guess. The F80 is more of like professional, grown, mature adult, and I get that. When I get into the E9X, I felt special. I felt as if every time I sat in this car, whether bone stock or track spec, it was always an experience. It was never just A to B. 
the F8X was always just like, okay, let's go here and here, and that's it. E90s, I, f I feel like you get in anywhere you go, whether it's a grocery store, or it's to your shop, or it's to see your family, or to go for a drive or a photo shoot. Every time I'm in an E9X, I feel as if it's an experience, a connected experience, every time, every single time. I just feel like the E9X has such a good connection. You have so much more soul and feeling to it. Thank you to everybody who participated in sending me over a video. That was really nice, you guys. I'm thankful that I have such a good audience and I really enjoy the, the E9X community. You guys are great, but like I said, I respect any opinion. I have, I'm not butthurt over anything. You could say you hate the E90s all day. It doesn't bother me, man. I'm happy as hell having this car and owning it again, especially a rare version of this car. If you liked it, please thumbs up the video and subscribe. And also, if you want to, you can check out the build on Spencer Burt Garage on Instagram. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.